Hi everyone, as you'll be aware from our communication on Tuesday, the new banking code of practice commences with effect Monday the 1st of July with a number of new requirements for brokers in dealing with vulnerable customers, ensuring that co-borrowers receive substantial benefit under the loan and various guarantor provisions. Lenders have in recent days and weeks been uh, giving brokers guidance on how they may assist the lender to meet their obligations under this new code. And whilst those uh, guidance notes have been delivered in a number of instances, we have to say that that was without consultation with the MFAA aggregators and brokers in terms of how those provisions were created. In recent weeks, the MFAA has on a daily basis been in contact with the Australian Bankers Association, the ABA, and had regular contact with aggregators, lenders uh, and regulators as we've tried to work through this ahead of the commencement on Monday. And whilst I'm confident that we will in due course come up with an acceptable outcome uh, and that we are all working in good faith towards that, at this point in time, just one business day ahead of commencement on Monday, we do not have an agreed outcome that I believe uh, is appropriate for brokers. Rather, I believe where we've landed poses risk to broker, brokers and will not be a good customer outcome. To be clear, our industry absolutely acknowledges and recognizes the importance of dealing with vulnerable customers in a sensitive, respectful and compassionate manner. We also acknowledge that brokers have the primary contact with 60% of all new home loan customers and as a result have a very legitimate role to play in ensuring that vulnerable customers receive the extra care that they deserve. However, that role that they play needs to be one that is reasonable and ideally standardized across the lenders uh, in order to be sustainable and orderly uh, going forward, an implementation that actually works and produces the right outcomes for consumers. There also needs to be uniform guidance and clearly there needs to be training in order for brokers to be able to have the best chance of being able to assist the customer. Finally, we do not believe that it is appropriate that there should be declarations, uh, declarations which you are not necessarily equipped to produce and that put your business as risk, at risk. Rather. Clearly, you're not a trained counsellor and can't be expected to be one. And uh, yet, having said that, we do believe you can make a very big difference to those that are vulnerable or experience crisis that you come into contact with. But your obligations in this area have to be reasonable and you need to be able to perform them on a best endeavours basis. The MFAA has taken legal advice with regards to uh, the banking code of practice as it applies to mortgage brokers. Uh, and there have been a number of issues raised in that. One, there's been privacy concerns around sensitive information, uh, potential liability issues around vulnerable customers and the signing of declarations. And finally, professional indemnity issues have been raised with a number of, of insurers advising that these vulnerable customer activities would fall outside of the current PI uh, indemnity insurance. Um, the MFAA's preferred approach right now is to delay the implementation for brokers or to have a period of agreed non-compliance so that we can document uh, exactly what is required, get appropriate legal advice, professional indemnity advice, and then produce more detailed guidance uh, and training and roll this out in a, uh, uh, an orderly manner. Now, we have not uh, had the opportunity, in fact, um, our request for a delay has not been agreed to, but we will continue to work with the ABA in terms of, of getting a greater definition of and a better understanding of what is required and then seeking to get that legal advice as we move forward so that we can hopefully proceed in a more informed manner. Whilst we have done everything in our, in our power to resolve the situation and move it along as quickly as possible, the situation we face now is, as I said earlier, being just 24 hours ahead of implementation that we don't uh, have a solution. And that does leave a great deal of uncertainty ahead of Monday. Monday. 
And we are therefore in a position that the only thing we can do is to reinforce the guidance that we gave earlier this week uh, in our media release and member uh, communications. And I will read from that just to reiterate what that is. And that is to advise you that, should, that you should not complete um, the parts of the application process relating to this new banking code of practice unless you feel adequately equipped to make an assessment and determination in relation to these issues with regards to that specific customer and in the context of the particular lender's instructions uh, of the lender that you are considering. If you cannot do this, and we accept that many of those applications cannot proceed without completing these sections, then you need to understand that you are at risk if you do proceed and make an error. And that according to the advice we have, that error is unlikely to be covered under your professional indemnity insurance. Now, you should also be in regular contact with your aggregator. I am in almost daily contact with your most of the aggregators uh, and they will be able to give you further guidance. We absolutely are aware of the difficulty this poses to your business and your ability to write business and, and find solutions for your customer. I really do understand that and a number of you have communicated that to me. We will also continue to work around the clock to find a solution. But given the risk the current solution poses to your business, I would be failing you if I gave you any other advice than the advice that we have just given. We have taken legal advice and we have got a number of alternatives that we are working through uh, and indeed in consultation with the ABA. And I must say I am confident that we'll get to an acceptable solution. But uh, in the interim, we've got to be in this holding pattern while we work through that and particularly given that our request for a delay or a non-compliance period was not agreed to. I have to assure you that I and the MFAA team are working exceptionally actively on this. It is our main priority and we will do everything in our power to resolve it as soon as we can in consultation with the ABA, lenders, aggregators and the regulators. We will keep you posted as soon as we have further information. Thanks for your time.